Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about Euler's rotation or gimbal flipping. Generally, we have problems with Euler's rotation during Maya animation. For example, after an over-rotation, your X and Z axes overlap. Or you find some axial direction uncontrolled when you are rotating. I'm going to talk about why this happens, and how we can avoid it in the production process. How to set the axes at the beginning of the animation. First I built two models here. Then on the left is the axial priority order and on the right is a simple model. We can think of it as a character. First we'll look at the default axes in Maya and we'll press Ctrl plus A. Seeing that its axes are XYZ, what does XYZ mean? X. As in this model X is the smallest level or sub-level. Outside of X is Y and Y is the parent of X. When you move Y, it will rotate X. The outside of Y is Z. When you move Z, Z will affect Y and X. So we can understand that Z is the largest of the two axes. So we can understand that Z is the largest. X is the smallest. Y is the middle. Let's see if it works like this. When we open its axis to our rotation Y, only X is affected, isn't it? When we rotate Z, both Y and X are affected. But when we rotate X, we can see Y and Z are unaffected. So this is how Maya's own axial modifications affect the character's axis. So let's take a look at the other axis, which is ZXY. ZXY means that X wraps around Z and Y wraps around X. So when you go to rotate Z individually, Y and X have no effect at all. When you rotate Y, your X and Z are affected. Let's take a look at the character. When we rotate Y, X and Z are affected. When we rotate X, is only Z affected? Of course, yes. So how do we set up this axial priority order in the animation once we know about it? From my own experience, it depends entirely on what kind of movement the animation is and what its axis of rotation looks like. Okay, let's take a look at the character first. Suppose I'm going to do a ballet animation on this character that rotates left and right all the time. How do the layers need to be set up? We need to set it to ZXY or XZY. Whether you set it to ZXY or XZY depends on whether you want to use more X's or Z's in the second axis. First of all, it's a ballet animation. We may need to use a lot of Y axis rotation if the next axis I use most is X. Then I would use the current ZXY. Z axis is used the least, so I can put my Z attributes less prio. If I'm animating a ballet that rotates very, very much in the axis of rotation, my second most used axis would be Z axis. I would change it to XZY. After I've rotated it so many times and added some rotation, I just need to move my X a little bit. Since I use my X axis the least, that means that the setting of the axis is based on which axis you use more or less. For example, if you use the X axis the most, set it to YZ or ZY plus X. If you use the X axis the least, set it to X plus YZ or ZY. Here's an example of a rotation. What if my character is doing a forward backflip, a constant backflip, and then jumping up similar to a vaulting maneuver like in the Olympics? What should I do? Or a diving maneuver that has 360 degrees and 720 degrees of body rotation in the air? This is the kind of animation where I want to put its Z axis at the end because I use the Z axis the most. So do I use XYZ or YXZ? Depends on what my second axis is. If it's diving, the X axis is not very useful because it's a vertical Y axis and there might be some sideways angles in the diving. The Y axis is used not too much and not too little. So we can then set XYZ as the default axis. That is the situation to set the priority of the axis according to the needs of our animation. 
We also have a situation is my animation has been done, and when I refine my animation, I find there are a lot of chaotic axes. Is that still possible to correct my axis? The answer is yes. This is when we need to correct our axes. How? First, we use the model to create a very rough dance animation. We use this model to K a very rough rotation animation. After it turns around, I want him to have a head chest up animation. But at the moment, it doesn't look like it's blending in very well on this axis. Then I realized that my axes were messed up. So how do we adjust it axially? First, we build a locator. The main idea is that we first use this locator. Get the keyframes on it and use the locator to apply a negative subconstraint to it. In the case of a negative subconstraint, we change the axis to the correct one. How to get keyframes? Put a negative subconstraint on locator with a character. Then bake, select smart bake. Then delete it. Okay, so let's delete the character's animation. And use locator to constrain it. It's also a parent constraint. It's axially constrained. So we can safely change our axes, change it to our ZXY, Why does this place rotate to the left and then to the right? Because its default axial rotation is over 360 degrees, the system will give it an automatic zero. Because 360 degrees is a circle. But don't worry, let's bake its axis first. Choose Smart Bake again because our axes are already corrected. We're just missing a 360 degree angle. Then we can add the 360 degrees here. Plus an equal and put 360. After we add the axes. We don't need an x-axis. What we need is the z-axis. So we zero out the x-axis. To give the z-axis a chest pumping animation. So now the character's spinning and chest up axis will be very, very clean. It'll be a stark contrast to the previous animation. I'll copy out the previous animation. Okay, the top one is the animation using the original axis, and the bottom one is a new animation in which we adjusted the axis. We see that the original animation and its axis are messy. Why? because its x-axis and z-axis have been overlapped, it is very difficult to control when we adjust the movement, right? It doesn't have a correct head-up axis. I can only adjust the x-axis and z-axis together to achieve such an effect. However, 
After we adjust the axis, we only need to move its z-axis to control the effect of lifting or bending the chest. It is very simple and efficient, and our axis is also completely correct. All the axes will not be messy. This is how I usually work with Maya Axial Corrections and Maya Axial Settings. The main purpose of the Maya Axial Setting is to determine the axis of rotation of your character before or during the animation. Make clear what is its priority and then change this rotation order according to its priority. Put the lowest priority at the first and the highest priority axes, which you use the most, at the last. This way, you will not mess up the axes of your character's animation. In fact, there is another way to solve the problem of the character's curved axes. This method is a bit more complicated. I don't usually use it in my work, unless it's a complex animation. The principle is the same as the model I'm building. First, I'll build three locators, or three models. The rotation of the character is controlled by a setup method. It's the same thing as the camera setup I talked about earlier. Create a new locator and delete the previous one. Name it. Then put the two into the one. Press P. Put it in the largest locator. Next, we'll delete this animation and redo it again. Go through it the locator way. First, constrain the locator with this roll. Select Maintain Offset. Check three locators. Zoom in a little bit. Then delete the constraints. Zoom in a bit and use the smallest locator to constrain the rotation of the character. If the character is going to do a spinning dance animation, the first thing I'm going to do is to adjust the y-axis rotation of the locator. Then we key it and then add a little bit of translation. Increase the rotation. Rotation adjusted to 50. After going to 50, I want to add a head up or down movement to the character. We'll use another locator. Since the first level is keying his y-axis rotation, I'll go to the second level and find its z-axis. Then just adjust its z-axis. This will be very easy to operate. Adjusted to about 50. Okay. We can make it bend a little later. This way your axes won't be messed up, because you have already divided the character's axes into nine axes with the locator. You can adjust them as you like. After lifting up the head, I want to add a little more left and right rotation animation. It's now straightforward to add. It is also possible to go to another minimal level to add it. With an axial setup like this, I usually put it in a very close-up shot, and so on. For example, the head or the hands are very close to the camera. There's a lot of detail in there. I need to add some rotation in all axes. And the axes can't be messed up, and no lagging. I'll use each of the three locators to control each rotation of the character. Make every rotation under my control. This is how I understand Euler's rotation in Maya animation.